Hi, I'm Dana. And I'm Miranda, and we are the nutrition interns at the Cardiovascular Wellness Program. And today we have a short little presentation on how to navigate a low-fat plant-based diet. We want to start off by saying thank you for um, doing our survey. And this presentation is based on the results. A plant-based diet is a diet consisting mostly of foods derived from plants, vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, legumes, fruits, and little to no animal products. The key part of this diet is to reduce the amount of processed foods that you consume. A vegan diet is different in that um, it has no animal products whatsoever. However, a lot of vegan products are processed. Why a plant-based diet? Well, a plant-based diet that is rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, these foods are full of fiber, high in vitamins and minerals, free of cholesterol, and low in calories and saturated fats. Eating a variety of these foods provides all the protein and other essential nutrients your body needs. A plant-based diet can lower the risk for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and other health conditions. Here are some ideas on how to go plant-based if you aren't already. The key is to increase the amount of whole plant foods consumed and reduce the amount of processed foods. You wanna start slow and remember this is not just a diet, this is a lifestyle change. Eat a variety of vegetables, fruit, whole grains, beans, legumes throughout the day. Choose healthy fats. And you can go as plant-based as you are comfortable. If you do choose to still eat animal products, try to reduce the amount that you eat daily and limit your choices to lean products, such as skinless poultry and fish. A serving size of lean meat should only be around three ounces, which is approximately the size of a deck of cards. Plant protein, um, this is something that a lot of people um, were concerned about that we um, found on our survey. To get your protein needs, you do not need to pair them at each meal. Instead, you need to make sure that you get a um, variety of the plant proteins each day. And these include whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts, including nut butter, seeds, fruits, vegetables, and tofu. And below I listed a few examples and I did make a handout that has a more detailed list of um, more plant-based proteins. Another concern that came up on our survey is that some people do not feel full um, while trying to do this type of diet. A few steps that you can take is one try small frequent meals throughout the day That can include um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a few snacks in between, or you can do five to six very small meals every couple hours throughout the day. You wanna balance each meal with foods from multiple food groups and include foods, foods such as whole grains, beans, and legumes, which will help make you feel full. Another concern that came up on the survey was um, some people were asking for recipes. And so here are some websites that I found online. And one that I use all the time is Pinterest. Um, they do have a Pinterest app for your phone or you can use it um, on your computer online. And all you have to do is look up, you can look up plant-based recipes or you can look up exactly what like certain recipe you want to try and it'll come up with a bunch of different options. Another um, website is Forks Over Knives which they do have an app but it does cost money but they do offer free recipes on their websites and I did find a few that I personally want to try so I do recommend taking a look at that and the other ones below I personally haven't tried any of these yet but um, I did look them over and there are um, 
multiple recipes that look very good on them. And now Miranda is going to talk to you about fat. So from the survey, I noticed that there is a little confusion on the different types of fats. So I'm going to go ahead and just briefly explain uh, the difference between those. And then I'll also talk about serving sizes. So for the fats that increase your risk for cardiovascular disease, we have saturated fat and trans fat. And these are fats you want to limit in your diet. Saturated fat raises your total blood cholesterol and your LDL cholesterol, which is your bad cholesterol. And then trans fat raises your LDL and your triglycerides in the blood. And then it lowers HDL cholesterol, which is your good cholesterol, and it can cause inflammation. And then the fats that decrease your risk for cardiovascular disease, these are the fats you want to eat more of in your diet, and they are unsaturated fats. So they can lower your LDL cholesterol, they can raise your HDL cholesterol, and then they help to develop and maintain your cells. And these are monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. And then within the polyunsaturated fats, we have omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids. So you want to aim to replace your saturated and trans fats with the monounsaturated and the polyunsaturated fats. The cardiovascular wellness program recommends that your total daily fat should be less than 12% of your diet with saturated fat being no more than 3%. So for example, if you were consuming a 2,000 calorie per day diet, 12% of the calories coming from that that are fat would be 240 calories. And then that would equal 26 grams of total fat. And then within that, the 60 calories and six grams of that can be from saturated fat. So for example, if you're not plant-based yet and you are still eating cheese, one ounce of cheddar cheese has 5.3 grams of saturated fat and 9.4 grams of total fat. So that right there, that 5.3 would be your total for the day of saturated fat that you could have. And then also just to let you guys know that fat does have nine calories per gram, so it can add up pretty quick. And then here's some fat sources for you guys to refer to. Um, the fat food sources, we have monounsaturated fats, which are in foods like nuts, avocados, and peanut butter. Polyunsaturated fats, you're gonna find in nuts, tofu, sunflower seeds, and soybeans. And then your omega-3s are in flax seeds, green leafy vegetables, walnuts, and chia seeds. Omega-6s are in sunflower seeds, walnuts, and pumpkin seeds. And then saturated fats, you're gonna find in cheese, coconut, animal fats, um, nuts. There is a small amount in most, but in Brazil nuts and macadamia nuts, there is a little bit of a higher amount, so be cautious of those. And then trans fats are going to be in like your processed food. So like cakes and cookies and donuts and things of that sort. And then here's some suggested serving sizes and then the fat content that is in those. So for nuts and seeds, you want to aim to have a fourth of a cup. And so, for example, a fourth of a cup of walnuts has 16.3 grams of fat. And within that, 1.5 grams is saturated fat. And then for an avocado, uh, suggested serving size is about a third of an avocado, and that has seven grams of fat, and one gram of that is saturated fat. Peanut butter has two tablespoons, and within that is 16.6 grams of fat, and 3.3 grams are saturated fat. Chia and flax seeds, you want to aim to eat two tablespoons, and in chia seeds, 6.1 grams of that is fat, and 0.8 grams of saturated fat. And tofu, three-fourths a cup is a suggested serving size, and that is about 175 grams, or 6.25 ounces. And that, as well, has 9.8 grams of fat and 1.9 grams of that saturated fat. So you want to be mindful of all of your serving sizes, because as you can see, the grams and calories from the fat can build up before you know it from just small amounts. And then so now I have an example of a low fat plant-based diet versus a high fat. So I'm just going to show you guys how I broke it down for you. I use a website called Chronometer and this is what I use for myself. So all the percentage, percentages that you see on the side is based off my needs. So just kind of ignore that. But over at, on the left side, I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner I broke down. It's all plant-based. And for the fat sources, I threw in some sunflower seeds. There's some tofu in there. And over on the right under the lipids, you can see that it's already at 24.8 grams of fat. So this is based off that 2000 calories a day and with the 12% of the fat being the 26 grams. So this is meeting that right there. 
and the saturated fat is at 4.5 grams. So that is less than the six grams are recommended. So this would be a good example of the diet that you would wanna follow. And also just to let you know, this is the protein from that last slide I just showed you. So if you're at all concerned that you're not eating an adequate amount of protein on a plant-based diet, you can see that all of the essential amino acids are met and they all are, all are well over 100%. So you're doing just fine if you're eating plant-based. And then here's the high fat diet. So I still have it pretty much the exact same as the last one, all I added was a couple extra servings of fat. So for breakfast, I added flax seeds and chia seeds and then a little bit of almond milk. At lunch, there's walnuts and sunflower seeds. And then at dinner, I have tofu, avocado, and almonds. So these are all great sources of fat. But over under the lipids, you can see that it's at 67 grams of fat. So that is way over the amount of the 26 grams that was recommended. So even though they're all great sources, you do want to be mindful of your serving sizes because it can really add up and you can be eating way more fat than you should be eating. And then some helpful resources I have for you guys if you're interested in tracking your own diet yourself. Chronometer is what I use. That's the example I just showed you guys. There's my fitness pal and then there as well as my plate calorie counter and lose it. Those are both two apps. So if you guys have a phone that um, can use those, I would definitely look into those. That is the end. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions?